Does using the Fibonacci series for estimating improve the accuracy of those estimates? That's the question we're going to be looking at today and stick around to the end to get your hands on this free Agile Estimating Cheat Sheet. My name is Gary Strawn. Welcome to Development That Pays, the channel dedicated to profitable software development. If we're meeting for the first time, please consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss a thing. If you've been following along with this series on Agile Estimating, you'll have got the message by now that estimating is hard. But some estimates are much easier than others. We've talked previously about estimates of absolute size versus estimates of relative size. How heavy is this is a hard question. Which of these is heavier is an easy question. Why is it an easy question? Well, it's because there's a large difference, we assume, in the weight of these two. When I say difference, is that the absolute difference or the relative difference? Which of these two coins is heavier? Which of these two bridges is heavier? I hope that answers the question. It's not the absolute difference that's important. It's the relative difference. Hold on a second. Wasn't there supposed to be an episode on the Fibonacci series? I think it's time we rolled it in. Actually, let's build it from scratch. The first two numbers are 0 and 1, and to get the third, we add the first two together. 0 plus 1 is 1. And we carry on adding pairs of numbers. 1 plus 1 gives us 2. 1 plus 2 gives us 3. 2 plus 3 gives us 5, and so on. 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89. What's interesting in this series is the gaps between the numbers. Not the absolute gaps, the relative gaps. The relative gap between these two is, oh, that's infinite. Yeah, that one's a little bit large. Let's move on. The relative gap between these two is 100%. Okay. 50%, 66.6 recurring percent, 60%, 62.5%, 62.6%, 61 and a bit percent, almost 62 percent, 61.8, 61.8. After some craziness at the beginning of the series, the relative gap between the members of the series settles down to around 61 and a bit percent. Let me see if I can demonstrate that to you a little more visually. Here are the first few, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. Ah, yeah, now we're out of space, so I'm going to zoom out around about 60%. And there's the 8. Zoom out another 60%. There's the 13. Zoom out again. 21. Zoom out once more. 34. Zoom out again. 55. Zoom out one last time. 89. I hope you can see that although the bars are getting skinnier as we zoom further and further out, the relative size between this one and this one stays pretty well constant. The reason that this scale works so well for estimating is that it encourages us to stay in the realm of easy estimates. It encourages us to stay with relative estimates. To say it in slightly different terms, if we are estimating two things and their sizes, their relative sizes, are not sufficiently different, then we consider that they both have the same size. Which brings us right back to the question that we started with today. Does the Fibonacci series lead to more accurate estimates? I think the answer has to be no. If anything, what it does is protect us from attempting to make accurate estimates. It keeps us in the realm of making rough or broad estimates. So I'm curious, do you use the Fibonacci series for your estimates? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. 
And finally today, there's the small matter of the cheat sheet that I mentioned at the beginning, the Agile Estimating Cheat Sheet. You'll find a link in the comments below. Click the link, follow the instructions, and it's all yours. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your network, and hit the logo right here for a brand new episode each and every Wednesday. Look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers for now.